want to take the time to thank you for um, sitting in on this uh, webinar for the Tracer Plus Getting Started tutorial, uh, Portable Technology Solutions, um, the creator of Tracer Plus and Clearstream. Thank you as well. My name is Ted Flick. I am a account representative been with Portable Technologies for over two and a half years. Um, I am not a programmer, but I have my history is over 30 years of experience in the AIDC marketplace using hardware solutions as well as providing software implementations, outlines for a number of vertical markets. Um, as again, I stated, I'm not a programmer. I have our Tracer Plus a developer, Joe Crable, on the back backside sitting in and on this, just in case some of your questions are going to be above my head. Today, what we're going to talk about a little bit is portable technology solutions in terms of what we our history, which we've been around for uh, since 2000 doing programming specifically again in the AIDC market with a focus on Tracer Plus mobility data collection, as well as RFID with our Clearstream products. Our focus today is obviously on Tracer Plus. So we're gonna be talking about the flexibility and the ease of which you can begin to develop your own applications, or you could have portable technology staff like Joe and others be able to develop your applications but the beauty of the Tracer Plus solution is, is that we give you that flexibility. If we develop it for you and you choose to make changes in the future, you have that capability. Uh, being in the industry for over 30 years, one of the key points that I try to let my customers know is that we provide solutions that give you control of your own software so that you're working for you're not working for your software, the software is working for you. Tracer Plus gives you that kind of flexibility. We're agnostic to the platforms that are dominant in the marketplace today. Um, obviously Android, which most of the major AIDC uh, devices work off of, Zebra, Datalogix, Honeywell, Janum, Cypher Labs and others, Apple iPhones, the iOS system, and we also work on Windows platform. The other beauty of it is, is we have connections that allow you to move your data that you collect to other databases, other applications that you may be using in terms of your business operations. So today what we're gonna be doing is, is I'm going to be showing you very quickly, the modules that you would need to get up and going to one, lay out your data collection applications or sessions. Number two, be able to connect your collected data from your device to your network or PC. And number three, it would be the Tracer Plus client, which actually is the software that resides on your devices and or a PC. So with that, what we're going to do is I'm going to start going into the actual uh, first component, which is the Tracer Plus desktop. What all these components, when you download this, you are asked for a login and a password, for obviously being your email if you've already done this and you have Tracer Plus loaded up on your PC, uh, and you will be asked for a password. This is important that you, you keep this in mind as when you download the applications you get in that download, the desktop, the connect, and the client for, a P, for the PC application. Uh, also, with your download, you can use in, use our web base, which we will get into after this after this tutorial. We can talk a little bit about your web base because when we download off of the Google Play Store or the Android um, 
Play Store, the Google um, Store, you basically, or the Apple Store, you're able to actually have applications that run on the website and you can actually see collected data. So already on your PC, you would have Tracer Plus Desktop, which I have. You would also start up Connect. And I've started up my simulator or the client version for the PC. So getting started, you have start open project. If you have projects that you already have uh, downloaded from our website, I'm going to start with a brand new project. We automatically begin by providing you with the project session and fields. So you can start naming your project right out of the gate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this demo two as my project. And then I'm going to go to the session or app. The session app, I'm going to name this receiving. And from there, we provide 10 fields. Now I am going to put together a very quick application here that really contains four data collection fields as well as a date and time stamp. But you can also add more fields as you can see over here, or you can subtract. So in the process, what we're gonna do, you can also add additional sessions over here by hitting the plus sign. This could be a different session that could be called shipping. I'm not gonna do that today. So I'm not just gonna exit that out. So from that point, what we start off with is, is you have multiple buttons up top. We have your field settings. This is where we sit here and design and define what our fields will be doing for us. So we have a general tab off to the side, after scan, validation, and lookup. These also can be used to add additional fields if we have more than 10 fields in our application. A form designer is, is the next step where we actually bring up and would create the actual form that your users would see on the device. The data capture we'll get into is setting up the rules of barcode scanning. Import export would be used for saving your data if you're not gonna use the connect which I'm not gonna be able to show you today. That's something that I've never taught myself how to do. So I'm gonna go right to the fields in our application. And I'm putting together a receiving session, which would include a purchase order number, an item number, quantity being received, and then where you are gonna put this item at a location in say a warehouse. So I'm going to start defining the fields right here. So basically, this is what your user will see. On the device, the field type is a text field. I'm going to keep it simple. But over here, we have a drop down. You can, you can create a drop down for your users to be able to select out of a drop down and a number of, of, of other different programming uh, operations that can be performed on the device. You can define the type of data. In this case, it's general. I'll take numbers in alpha. We can go and restrict the field just to numbers, and we can set up a date and time type format. I'm going to make this a visible. Uh, Entry. I'm going to show it in a grid. The grid will show up on your collected transactions after you have put through the um, and recorded the transaction. There's the after scan. At this point, we basically want to direct after you put the data in, either scan it or key enter it. What do you want it to do? 
In this case, I want to hold the purchase order number because we may have multiple items on a purchase order number. So I don't want to clear that when we submit the transaction. But I do want to be able to tell what field we're going to go to next after the data has been entered. So in this case, you, you're able to define what field you want to drop down to next. You also have a number of different other ways of filtering and controlling the information that your users put into the into that particular field. You can also load purchase order information into your device and you can make sure that the user is keying in the right purchase order to be received as well as validate against the item number. So you can really make sure that you're getting the correct data entered by your user. This will also streamline the operation in terms of, of receiving. Same thing goes for lookup options. You're allowed to do lookups for presentation purposes. Again, I am uh, not a programmer, so I am not going to be able to show you how this actually works. But for those programmers out there at the end of the session, if you have any questions, we'll, uh, we'll address those types of uh, more detailed. That's why I have Joe. So let's move on to the next field. I can sit here and type into this field as well, or I can type into this field to give it its, its personality. So we enter the item number. Again, it's going to be very general in terms of what we're doing here, in terms of my after scan or after my entry. When I clear the transit, when I clear and finish the, tra the transaction, it will clear this, it will clear this field. I want to go to the field three or the next field down in terms of my next data entry portion. And again, we have the validation and lookups. I'm going to put our quantity and enter our location. And we define that again. We can see that we're, we're pointing everything in a specific direction. Same validation capabilities if you want to build more sophistication into your app, into your session or your application. I'm also going to add a date to be presented. So here I'm going to sit down and change the data type. It's a date and time. Specify the format of my date. Going to add time. I want this to be read only. Now, after my scan on location, when I enter the location, that's the last entry point for my transaction. I do not want to get rid of my purchase order, as I stated before, because POs sometimes have more items on them than just one at a time. So I want to loop my cursor back up to the entry field. I'm going to make a correction to that because the rest of these fields I can remove. So now that we basically have defined our data collection for this particular session application, it's time now to start looking at how we want it to present to the user. So we come to our form designer, say we want to create a default session, or you can create from a blank field. At that point, you would have to use this area here. If you go with the blank field to where you would position, you would create your label. You would have to position your fields that you've created out of this form here, out of this part of the application. You have to create buttons for submitting, done, and then also 
set up what those personalities are. In this case, what we're going to do is Tracer Plus will create the form for you. We'll create the form for you. So right now, there's our application. The border kind of shows the general size of what a, what a um, portable device would um, be able to have this displayed. We've also created a record count, so you could actually see how many entries you have on your form. A done button has been created, a submit button, that's basically an enter button or submit your transaction, and then a clear, a clear all form. If you um, unfortunately put something in incorrectly, you want to clear it out and start start over. Now over here, each one of these is a label. And on this side over here where it says selected control properties, you have control over the properties. You have control over the background color of those fields. So we can change this. We can change the background again of, of all these particular areas. So you can pretty it up for your, your user. You can do the same here. You notice that we have fonts, font sizes you, you can increase. Okay, we have behaviors, lengths, widths of the actual fields that you can change in terms of what the user sees. Okay. From there, to complete this portion of our design, I'm using Connect as a way of pushing our information from the device to my PC here. Or in your case, Connect is the way in which the data is moved from the device to your PC network. Um, this allows you to control where you want the data to be stored on your um, your network to be used by other programs. So at this point in time, I'm going to have to create a button, which I'm going to call sync data. So I come over here to my properties. Got to give it a name. And then I got to basically create an action that that button is going to take. Right now it's set to none. And we give a, a number of different options here to choose from in terms of what you want that button to do or perform. Down here, we're going to do a sync. It populates what we're syncing in terms of the data, our session, session name, And then what I want to do is I'll just give it a different color here. At this point in time, we're pretty much done with being able to get this ready to be sent out. We have one more step to take. We have to now set up a profile for the Connect. Connect software is important because I, I view it as, and I tell my customers that the Connect software is the, is the communications gateway between your devices and your network where you want the data to be sent. So it acts as a, a way of, number one, setting up your, your communications with your uh, Wi-Fi network. Number two, it allows you to direct where the data is being sent. Number three, and most importantly, is that because Tracer Plus is such a powerful tool, you're allowed to take data from your existing systems or your other WMS or ERP systems, create a table that you may want to use for validation at the point of scan. Uh, so Connect allows you to, to point that information and pull the data to and from. It also allows you to set up how the data is going to be stored vis-a-vis -vis Excel, SQL, ODBC, or an endpoint on the cloud. So we have to set up a profile. So at this point in time, before I get to that, I'm going to save this. 
This is my project. Save it under here. Now that's what's important is that that project gets saved because in Connect, we are going to be associating that project to this profile. So again, it looks very similar in terms of how we set this up in terms of adding profile and or project processes. When you first start Connect and you want to start a profile, it's going to come up with this screen and it's going to say, is this a sync profile or is it a live profile? Live profile basically is telling you that you are going to be directing the connection to a, an active database where data is moving back and forth. For this particular presentation, we're doing a sync profile. That's why I created the sync button uh, in, in my application. So to create this, again, we talk about what type of project that I just mentioned. So we're going to say, I want to use my demo two project. And I want to create the profile. So we've started the process here. So again, I have a profile name, I'm going to name it receiving. And I do a sync process. So I'm adding a sync process. Call it receiving. Just trying to keep it simple. And this is where we begin to define where the data is coming from, which is called our source, and the destination. Where do we want it to go? So we know that we have the client on our handheld device. So our source is coming from our Tracer Plus Demo 2 project. And you see that the session is called receiving, as I, as I had called it in the, in the desktop, right here. Session name is receiving. And now we want to say, I want the collected information to be sent to a destination. In this case, you see the different selections that you have as a user, ODBC, SQL, Access, Salesforce, Custom Endpoints. I'm not going to get into it again because I've done, never done a Custom Endpoint. I'm going to keep it simple. I've, I've created an Excel spreadsheet on my, on my computer in my folder. So I'm going to go to that Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to select that. I called it receiving. And as you know, Excel has multiple sheets, or you can have multiple sheets in Excel. We can actually specify what sheet you want the data to be written to. You also have the ability to say, I want to start at row one or row two, in case your, your Excel spreadsheet has a header. So we'll go to row number two. And you have other options. Do I want to append, overwrite, update existing? Again, there's a lot of selections. There's a lot of things going on here. We have now defined the information in that, in that aspect. So now we know the source of our data collection is going coming from Tracer Plus on our devices. It is now going to a destination that I've defined on my um, laptop. Now, the next and last step that you would have to perform is that we have to tell Demo2 project what network or how do we connect to send the data to my laptop off of the Wi Fi network. So, to do this, in Connect, you go up to View. I bring up the event log. This is what I show my customers in the event log. Once I have the event log up, I go to Tools, stop our 
communication server or, or connect server and I started. This tells you the IP address that you're going to use for your project to be able to connect and send the data. We are now ready to deploy the application. And I'm going to save this just to make sure. And I'm going to come down here at the bottom and you will see build and deploy. Basically, under your build and deploy, you specify the OS that you're going to be using. In this case, I'm going to be using a uh, client that works on my PC so that you can see the actual application. But in this case, if you have your Android phone or iOS phone, you would basically select the particular OS that you're working with. In this case, I'm using Windows. From here, you would be able to take your phone, scan the QR code off the screen using your camera. And this again is, is assuming that you have that the Tracer Plus application client has been loaded up on your device either through the, uh, the uh, Apple Store or the Google Play Store. This is what it would look like in terms of your device, your phone, terminal, you would download the project. In this case, because it's I'm on the same backbone on my PC. Got to do something here, I apologize. On my connect, I need to save it. So I'm going to close out my connect. I'm going to reopen it. Let me try this one more time because I can tell that my screen that I've developed has not come through. Problem is I have a couple of different apps up there and I did not select the right one. Here we go. I'm showing one record up there because I probably have something in the database that I'm not supposed to have from testing this out, but here's the application. Start entering some data, item number. And I've obviously missed something because, again, I'm not a programmer and I'm probably rushing through this. 
that's my problem, but data has been entered. We hit sync. Think is complete. Now the beauty of also using Connect is you can take a look at Connect. We also have a data viewer. It also allows you to monitor the connection between your device as you're sending and syncing the data. We'll jump over to Excel. Oh. And there's the data that I entered. That's using it through Connect. Now I may be moving a little bit too fast for my PC to write the record to the Excel like I'm supposed to. That essentially is the component or the components that allow you to take Tracer Plus from the desktop, developing your own applications, defining your information, setting up the connection, appearance. There's obviously a lot of other tools up here for aligning it when it comes to setting up how it's displayed. All of these have functions. Another uh, for more in depth programming, we have a thing called Form Logic that really gets into some very um, scripting type um, data requirements. Again, that's something that you could ask Joe about uh, when it comes to getting into the more details. Uh, it's a very powerful tool that we've been able to show you here today. Um, Again, if you have questions, I think you can type those in and we'll, we'll address them because we're coming down to a point to where I want to give some time for that. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you want to get in touch with uh, your sales rep or your account representative to get a little bit more in depth in terms of the Tracer Plus, feel free to do that. Uh, one of the things that I want to point one more thing out in terms of Slideshow here. Is that when you download onto your actual device, you actually get a set of free apps. You can go to tracerplus.com where you may find an application very specific or very close to your requirements or what you're trying to do within your warehouse or your organization that you then would be able to use Tracer Plus and modify and make changes to. When you do it that way, downloading something from the Tracer Plus uh, website, you would need to develop a profile in the Connect software. But when you download first time, this is what will appear on your, your device from the, the the um, Apple Store and the uh, Play Store. <clears throat> With your login and password, we have a Tracer Plus console and you can select and, and, and deploy one of these or use these applications and actually enter information on your phone. While you are on the console, you can refresh the console and actually see your data appear on your computer through our, our web-based demo. So that's a very powerful way of a powerful tool to be able to see how capable we are of moving, moving the information and presenting a good, good application to solve your data collection needs. Again, I will, I will put this in closing that we not only provide you with Tracer Plus the ability to create your own apps, create your own data collection solutions for your company, uh, if you feel that you don't have the technical expertise, we do provide the services for programming based on 
written scopes of work, working with you to get you from point A to point B in your data collection process as quickly and efficiently as possible. In terms of also giving you proper guidance in terms of solutions of the hardware to be used based on the environment that you're implementing your, your data collection applications. So at this point, I would like to basically open the floor to any questions that you may have that I may be able to answer, or if I have to, I can defer to Joe in reference to um, him jumping in and filling in any of the um, any of my gaps, which are quite a bit. Thanks, Ted. This is Joe from PTS. We do have a few questions here. Um, so one is, what were you using to display the application? Well, that, what I was using to display the application itself is I was using uh, one of the components, which is called the uh, PTS client. So that also is can be used on a regular PC. So it's a good tool to have to test your applications before maybe deploying to your portable devices. So yep, that's, that's what also, we use. Yep, and you can also use that for production as well for folks that don't have devices or they may have workstations. Uh, yep. In the shipping and receiving area, they could use that as well. We do have some customers using that tool and some of you may also know it as Tracer Plus for PC. And I did want to mention that we should be releasing a 10.7 version of that soon, um, as we're just working out a few uh, minor issues that we needed to catch up on. All right, another question here. What free resources are available for us while we build our apps? Well, basically, there's a number of resources when you do a download obviously you have the tracer plus trial which is basically full it's a full working version of the tracer plus desktop connect and the um, tracer plus pc so that's open to your availability we also have two days out of the week which i find to be very unique in my my experience in this industry we have what we call open office hours. So as you're developing your Tracer Plus apps sessions, then you may come across some issues in terms of maybe an ODBC uh, connection or, or for some reason you can't get the display to work. You can register to get onto the open office hours. Uh, Tuesday, I think is in the afternoons at around one o'clock. You can do, you can tell if that, Joe, you can correct me. And on Thursdays in the morning around 10 o'clock, when you register, you're actually talking to either a Joe or, or some of our developers who will help you solve any issues that you may be running into. And that again is a, is, is a free tool that you can use to, to get to know the program and to make your uh, development happen more smoothly. Yep. Uh, so we have another question here, what support options exist? That kind of, I guess, piggybacks off of what we were just talking about with the open office, but as long as you're using a subscription license or if you're during your free trial phase, you do have access um, to those open office hours as well as um, you can create tickets uh, with our support team. Um, if you needed some additional assistance with creating an application, we do also uh, offer training as well as our own services to create the applications. Um, so if you want to enlist us to create apps, um, you can speak to your account rep such as Ted and they can get that process rolling. All right, we have another question here. Is there a way to make sure that the field only accepts the appropriate character, like only number or only alphabetical, as a way to prevent errors? Um, so yes, I can take that one, Ted. We can do that yeah. with, <laughs> with the validation settings that Ted was showing earlier. Um, so we do have also have a data type setting. Um, 
So data type number will force that field to be number only and it won't accept alpha characters. Um, you can also do additional things within form logic um, if you wanted to get crazy and only accept you know, strings that start with a certain character, you can parse that out and then do sort of a, what we call a must match or an equals validation so that you can confirm a field even starts with a specific value. Um, so there are a lot of options you can do for validation in accepting data. And Ted, if you actually jump over to the um, data capture settings. So we also have this smart form area where you can actually direct data into specific fields based on what that data contains. So you can do it based on length, you can do it based on starts with, ends with. We can force data into fields based on a barcode or RFID scan. So that's another clean way of speeding up data entry so that when users enter data, it ends up in the correct field. I hope that cleared up your question. Another question here on what RFID devices are compatible with. Are you compatible with? Um, let me know if you want me to take that one. Um, most of, a lot, I'll do most of the Zebra ones, but we're also working with different um, other manufacturers as well, like uh, Janum, Cypher Lab Sleds, um, Socket, Socket Scanning, Socket Scanning Devices, uh, which are also uh, barcode as well as RFID. Any other ones you want to you throw in there, Joe, go for it. Uh, yes, I do want to mention our recent 10.7 release that did add support for that Janum XR2 device. Uh, it's a nice device all combined in one, all in one device, and it also supports cellular and GPS, which a lot of people ask for. We did a webinar on that a few weeks ago, so check out our channel for that video if you haven't uh, seen it yet. We also added support for the Cypher Lab sleds, so you could take a you know an RS34, uh, RS35 or RS36, as well as the RK26, pair it with their actually connect it into a sled and use the Tracer Plus RFID solution. We do support all of the Zebra mobile readers, so that's your MC33s, your RFD40s, your RFD90s. Um, as well as the older RFT8500, which is being phased out. And we should be supporting any newer devices from Ziva that do happen to come out in the future. And TSL sleds, I also want to mention. Right, yeah, I forgot about that. All right, another question here. Can the app access the device camera to use a built-in scanner. So I think you're asking if you can scan barcodes with the device's camera. That is possible and does does work with your Android or iOS phones uh, and typically any unsupported hardware with Tracer Plus. Um, we natively support Zebra, Cypher, Janum devices. Um, so those all have built-in barcode scanners where you wouldn't need to use the camera to scan. But for other devices, such as your Samsung or iPhones, you can use the camera to scan barcodes, um, if that's what you're asking. Another good question here. So if we're developing this for other customers, would they need to download Tracer Plus on their computers or is there a way to brand our application? Yes, there's a there's a option that you can talk to your sales account representatives about that's called publisher. And what that allows you to do is you can brand your own um, logo. You can do the apps yourself, or you can contract us out to do the apps, but you basically have control over the licensing um, to your clients that you're providing solutions for without any, any view of, uh, tra of a portable technology, Tracer Plus. 
you want to get more detailed, Joe, go, you know, do that. But that's, yes, we do have an option that allows you to um, basically uh, put your, put you as the, uh, the main, the main company. <laughs> yep. So there is a section in desktop. Uh, you'll see publisher. Um, that is a separate license that you would need to purchase. But once you unlock that, you would see these different options where you can add your own branding, as Ted mentioned. It's actually going to install as your own branded app, separate from Tracer Plus. It can be a separate login or a separate registration from Tracer Plus so that users couldn't access the application with a standard Tracer Plus license. So that's one benefit of Publisher. The only thing I do want to mention is it's only supported for Android currently. So if you had an iOS or a PC app, that's currently not supported and you'd have to use a standard Tracer Plus application for that. Another question here, can a total inventory value be calculated? Uh, let me get the full question here. I'm not clear on how to do that calculation. So I don't know if that's referring to calculating a dollar amount based on quantity, but if that is the case, yes, you can do that with a calculated field by simply multiplying that quantity field times, you know, potentially a price that may be looked up from an item list, and then you would get a total value. Question on if you could elaborate a bit on the PTS cloud. Um, could I use that as my database? Well, we do we do offer cloud services, so we can have a discussion on on those um, services. But yes, you could. You know, using using the cloud, you could basically do what you just asked and joe you can again elaborate more on that because i'm not completely familiar with it and i know we're really doing a lot with that at this point in time in terms of our cloud services and having the data sent from the terminals to be stored up in the cloud that would be specific to the client yep, sure and if you're referring to the the sample apps that we include uh, with the tracer plus download um so you Essentially, you can use that to test and see how the, the functionality works. You can sync that data to the cloud and you can even export it to, I believe it's a CSV file, um, the data that you actually scan and submit. Um, but typically users would want more functionality and more, um, more power out of that to do different things other than just being able to view and export data. But that functionality is there if you wanted to see how that works. That would be the basic concept of what a PTS cloud would, would look like if you did happen to enlist our cloud services. All right, another question here. Could the read data be exported to another application through an API integration? Um, so Yes, I can take that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> we can do that. We would need more information on the application you're looking to send the data to. Um, so that's something that we do typically offer um, once all the details are fleshed out. All right, not seeing any more questions. So we can probably wrap up. All right, well, again, I appreciate your time. Again, if you have further questions, reach out to uh, Portable Technology, talk to your account rep, uh, be more than happy to help you move forward with what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve in terms of data collection and RFID. So I wish everybody to have a great rest of your day and thank you very much.